Hey everybody, I'm Dinosaur George. Welcome to my YouTube series. I hope uh, you find this interesting. People can write to me and ask me questions and I respond to them on this channel. So um, if you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page and I'll do my best to choose yours. But we get so many, it's impossible to do them all, but keep trying. All right, this episode, the highlighted item is a Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth with the root. It is item 3047 and it sells for $19.95. Now this one is cool because it's the root included. You know, when you look, and this is a replica, everybody, just so that you guys know, I don't sell authentic fossils. I only sell reproductions, cast, or, or I either sell cast or sculpted replicas. Um, we always see a lot of availability on the upper tooth part. But you don't see that often, the root included. That gives you a better idea of how thick and heavy this tooth is. Now, in an earlier show, I highlighted a Giganotosaurus tooth, and I mentioned that that tooth is more thin and blade-like. Well, this is the typical Tyrannosaurus tooth. Very, very heavy, very thick and robust. These are bone-crunching teeth. They're not just meat slicers, they're bone crunchers. This is a relatively large one. This is a pretty heavy-duty one. And I think on the website, I've got two or three different kinds of T-Rex teeth, um, uh, I think different types. So look through there and see, but this is a very good one. And again, it sells for $20, which makes it very affordable. All right, let's get into it. Sammy from Macon, Georgia, who would win in a fight between Dunkleosteus and the Lyplorodon. And I'm sorry if I spelled it wrong, but you're right. Um, thank you, Mr. Blassing, for answering my question. If you do, but it's okay if you don't have the time. Well, Sammy, that's kind of you to tell me that uh, it would be okay if I didn't have time to answer this. But I'm glad I do, and uh, I'm happy to answer it for you. And again, uh, thank you for calling me Mr. Blasting, but you can call me George, whatever you prefer. All right, so Dunkleosis and Lyplorodon, two animals that, that never met, never had anything to do with each other. So when I answer these sort of questions, it's just simply a guess. I, I have not, I don't have any facts to, b to back this up. So I do know that that jaw configuration of Dunkleosteus makes it pretty nasty and probably could inflict a pretty heavy duty wound. But here's the problem with it. Its nose is relatively blunt, meaning it's not getting as gigantic a bite because it can only open its, its, its upper jaw so far. And I believe Dunkleosteus does not, I don't think it's lower jaw moves, I think it's upper skull moves back, right? So the problem is that it, it only goes so far. It's not really made to take a gigantic bite out of something. It's really, I think, more to take a bite out of something that's relatively thin. So if you come up to the side of something as giant as like Pluridon, you can't make the gigantic, it's almost like an ice cream scoop. You're gonna get a little scoop out. But with Lyplorodon, he's different. He's got that gigantic crocodilian-like head, which means when you open that giant mouth, you get everything in. So one bite from Lyplorodon and that poor Dunkleosteus would be wiped out. The only ad advantage Dunkleosteus would have is it doesn't need to come up for air during the fight. And if you're fighting underwater and you're expending a lot of oxygen, you've got to get up and get air. And when you leave the fight to go up, your belly's completely exposed and you can get attacked. So uh, I think like Pluridon is just simply too big. But that's an interesting question, Sammy. And I hope you have a good day, by the way. All right, Adam from New Jersey. Hey, DG. Hey, Adam, how are you? I have two questions. Do you think Tyrannosaurus is hunted in packs? And when Spinosaurus and Carcharodontus had a confrontation, who would have the upper hand and win? Thanks for your time, DG. Happy to do it, Adam. Okay, your first question, did Tyrannosaurus is hunt in packs? I think they did. I don't think the packs were large. I don't think they were like a pack of wolves. I think maybe three would be as about as much of a pack as you'd want to be in. Uh, maybe the packs were a little bit larger when, you're, when your offspring are growing because you've got to teach them how to hunt. So maybe there's more in the group at the time, but once they're big enough to hunt on their own, I think the parents kicked them out. And I think these animals probably limited to either two or three. And the reason I think that is because at some point it becomes a disadvantage to have too many big guys in the group because where do you hide? So in my best guess, I think those animals probably uh, hunted in a small group. As for your question about Carcharodontosaurus and Spinosaurus, nature is an amazing thing because of the way it divides up the food sources. Different animals fill different openings within the environment, different niches. Carcharodontosaurus is doing something totally different than Spinosaurus. I don't think they gave each other much attention. I think when they came in contact, they gave each other a wide berth because there is no reason to fight. T 
territory is not an issue. If you're hunting in the water and I'm hunting on land, I don't care what you do. They have no interest in each other. They don't have anything to do with one another. You do your thing and I do my thing. That's my opinion of what happened when Carcharodontosaurus and Spinosaurus came in contact. Um, Maybe one would give way to the other if the other was bigger. You just kind of stay away from them. But I don't really think there would have been an actual fighting confrontation. But that is, uh, that's, that's an interesting question, Adam. All right, Ethan from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Hey, Dr. Blossing. Again, Ethan appreciates thinking I'm a doctor. That's, that's a big compliment, but I am not. I did not get my degree. I am not a doctor. So don't, don't ever call me doctor, but you can call me George. You can call me Ray, or you can call me Jay. Okay, that is a joke from the 1970s. Oh my gosh, nobody's going to get that other than old people. All right. I uh, hope you're doing fine. That's very, and he says, sorry if I misspelled your name. That's, uh, Ethan, that's fine. You did a great job and you spelled it correct. Okay. I wanted to ask you a question for a long time. Who would win in a fight between Allosaurus and T-Rex? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Ethan, those dinosaurs are, are so mismatched that I don't even believe there would be a fight. Now, they didn't live together. They never saw each other, have nothing to do with each other. This is just my opinion. And I understand that's what you're asking too. You, you don't believe they live together, and I know you don't, Ethan. Um, I think Tyrannosaurus is simply overpowering so big and so strong and so massive that I think Allosaurus would take one look and hit the road. And I hate to say that because I love Allosaurus, but uh, I just don't believe that, uh, I just don't believe that, that Allosaurus would stay and fight. All right, Matthew from Sydney, Australia. Hey, DG, it's Matthew again. Nice to hear from you, Matthew. I just wanted to ask why, a spin uh, why was a Spinosaurus a little bigger than T-Rex? And as you know of the new Spinosaurus, was actually was it bigger or smaller? Okay, when we talk about what's bigger or smaller, there's a lot of variables that go in that, um, uh, Matthew. Uh, if you have a giraffe and you have an elephant, who's taller? Giraffe. Who's bigger? elephant. So, or who's stronger would be the elephant. So would you look at those two animals and say a giraffe is bigger because it's taller? Same with Spinosaurus. If you take Spinosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex and stand them side by side, yes, Spinosaurus's body is longer. And yes, it's taller if you include the sail. But it is so completely different of a dinosaur that if you're measuring who's the biggest by what is the strongest, Tyrannosaurus rex is simply overpowering. He's just He's just too big of a monster. So it may have been longer, and including the sail, it may have been taller, but I wouldn't classify it as bigger. Hope that makes sense, buddy. All right, Jackson from Lubbock, Texas. Dear DG, my favorite dinosaur is Ostrophrecosaurus, and I was hoping you could tell me more about it. I hope you get around to answering this and have a great day. Okay. Ostrophrecosaurus. I think that dinosaur was described and named off the discovery of a single tooth. I think. Some people believed it was a Spinosaurus. Some people disagree, think it was something else. I don't know enough about this dinosaur to even begin to tell you anything about it, uh, Jackson. I, I'm so sorry, buddy. I just don't know enough about him, it, whether it is indeed a legitimate dinosaur or if some people think it's something different. But whatever the case is, I, I, I just don't know enough about it. I am so sorry, my friend. I wish I could answer your question. Finally, Zaheer from Bordertown, South Australia. Hey, DG, how's it going, buddy? Going great, Zaheer. Good to hear from you, buddy. I was just wondering about your thoughts, what your thoughts were about the latest reconstruction of the iconic Pelicosaur mammal like Dimetrodon. I think it looks awesome, don't you? Okay, Dimetrodon is an interesting subject because somebody recently sent me something about a Dimetrodon. Um, sometimes I think paleontologists can be guilty of overthinking and changing things just for the sake of changing them. What I mean by that is if all the other paleontologists before you looked at the evidence and concluded A, and you look at that same evidence, but you conclude B. It doesn't mean you're wrong, but at some point you should look at the majority of opinions of something. Um, now, some people are gonna say yes, but scientists used to think the earth was flat. Yes, some people thought the earth was flat, but scientists were already questioning that long before it became realized that the earth wasn't flat. So it doesn't mean that when somebody says something and other people join in, you should join in for the sake of joining in. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying though is sometimes I think we go back 
It's kind of like the scavenger predator theory of Tyrannosaurus Rex. Seems like every week I read a new theory where somebody has now discovered the fact and he's a scavenger. Then the next week, no, he's a predator. Ah, okay. I think sometimes we overthink things and maybe this new version of Dimetrodon may be correct. Uh, maybe he does have a different stance. Maybe he does look different. Maybe he is a furry colored guy, but I just don't know enough and I haven't seen enough scientific evidence yet for me to have a really good opinion of this here. Again, one of the difficulties about the internet is that so many people can throw out opinions that seem to get converted into fact. And the next thing you know, somebody says something absurd and it gets passed along and then people later on begin to think that was said by a scientist who actually studied it. So I don't know, buddy. I, I can tell you this. I love Dimetrodon. I think he's the coolest looking dino a dinosaur. Dinosaur. Listen to me. That's blasphemous, man. He is the coolest looking animal I, I like him the most from the Permian. The only thing I think I like more than from the Permian are the uh, Gorgonopsids because I just think they look cool. So, all right, you guys, if you have a question, write to me at dinosaurgeorge.com. While you're there, check out my website. Check out the website. There's all kinds of cool stuff on there. My calendar is there and you can kind of see where I'm traveling and maybe I'll come visit you soon. Until next time, take care, everybody. We'll see you again.